Greetings. My name is Semple, and today I will be ranking Decaying Winter's perks. Now, Decaying Winter has lots of perks, which some are good, some are decent, and some are uh, not so good. I will not be ranking Survivalist, as it's pretty much perkless, but I will rank Damned because of that one upside we all love. With nothing else to say, let's get started. Hive Mind. Now, Hive Mind used to be pretty bad perk. He dealt low damage, his bees were not getting the job done. That was until the update which has buffed him and made him the beast of a perk he is today. Hive Mind's ability has three forms Disperse, which is basically a firebomb, Divide, which is disperse but longer and less wide. And then he has direct, making bees around himself of which target and attack anyone close to hive mind. Very useful ability for scavenging. Hive mind's bees also slow down the target and make them vomit, making them vulnerable to any attack. That having said, hive mind's a very good perk, having both single target and crowd control damage. His pros are, uh, however, quite useless, and his cons are not that bad. But Hive Mind can carry entire waves, and that is why I put him on S tier. Airbitter. Airbitter is definitely one of the perks of the King Winter. <laughs> the thing survivalist wants to be, jack of all trades. Airbitter's ability is being able to shoot a shell either up to close range dealing high damage or long range, being able to kill most of the scavs in the entire game, <laughs> but including yourself. Airbitter's ability is very useful in all scenarios you could think of. You've got a get out of jail card, which kills most of the scavs in the entire game anyways. Airbitter can stay at the back, killing scuffs with long-range weapons, or be at the front, killing enemies with Disseminator or whatever melee weapon of your choice. Airbitter's pros are very good, and his cons don't affect him too much. Easily S tier. Risk Runner I don't know what it is, but there's something extremely satisfying about Risk Runner. Being able to mow down hordes of enemies by holding M1 and not waste useful resources in the process. Risk Runner can be either the one that takes care of the wall wave or the last option if your frontliners make a mistake. Risk Runner's ability is to pull out a machine gun and shoot anything in his way. This machine gun has a slow recharge which can be sped up by picking up ammunition, but as a penalty he picks up less of the ammo. His cons are not that game changing and his pros are quite useful. He cannot aim in, but his pros balance that out. His problems are that in later waves his machine gun becomes less useful and the slow mobility while having it equipped can get you killed. A tier. Executioner. Our first melee on the best perk on the list. Executioner used to be one of the most broken perks there are, but after the melee update, things have gotten worse for melee based classes. That being said, Executioner has not fallen from grace completely. It is still a very powerful perk, allowing you to deal an insane amount of damage. The melee update made scuffs range 200%, meaning they always hit you before you hit them, so you always have to parry or shove before attacking enemies so you don't get hit. Executioner's ability are goggles, which while on have their own health state, and with each melee kill your melee damage increases. When the goggles reach 0% or 0 health state, you will be unable to see anything. Upon unequipping the goggles, you get a certain amount of scrap for all the kills you've got. Executioner's pros are very good for his ability, and only one of his cons is bad, 
that is not being able to use scrappers. He gets a solid A tier. Zealot. Zealot, the shield guy. The guy with a very questionable ability. Zealot's ability is mediocre. He can make a turret with a shield. Turret deals damage to all scouts within its range, and the shield protects you from few bullets till it breaks. You can hold F to hold your own turretless shield in your hands, which is very much useless, however. Zealot is supposed to be the tank, but his ability is not helping with that at all. The turret shield doesn't last that long and recharges for ages. His pros are nice, of course, and his cones are simply said annoying. But he still gets a C tier. Not a bad perk. Tick Spider Tick Spider used to be one of the worst perks in the entire game. His ability killing teammates all the time. That was until they buffed him, making spiders don't damage teammates upon explosion. Tick Spider's ability is to spawn in ticks, which will detonate when enemies get near. He can press F to spawn a tick, which will stand on a place. And he can hold F to spawn a tick, which will go after the nearest enemies. Tick Spider is good with ranged weapons. He can summon ticks at the front and stand at the back while scouts trying to hurt him die. Tick Spider is usually the guy you can kill the queen with quite easily. Tick Spider's pros are good. With professional trade, he gets no recoil at all. And the more trap damage is good for killing the, killing the queen. His cons are annoying but manageable to deal with. He gets very good A tier. Crossling. Crossling, the trap guy. Crosslink is sort of a fragile perk. He can be great support, but also can die very easily. Cro Crosslink's ability is to set up traps on the ground. Scaffs get stuck in these traps and become vulnerable to any sort of attack. Crosslink can call his traps back, damaging any scaffs in between. Crosslink's pros are nice to have, but his cons aren't. Crosslink is a good perk. He gets A tier. Blitzer. Here's the perk which everyone goes for. Is there a reason for it? Well, it's complicated. This perk is all things considered pretty bad. And I know people will tell me apart for saying this, but it's just how I see it. Even in good hands, your team will hate you, as they'll always have to keep distance from enemies. He can make area denial for both your team and scaffs. Blitzer can throw up to 6 sticky bombs upon explosion. They will deal damage to anyone, including your own teammates, and stunning them for a second or two. These bombs can also stick to your teammates and never disappear. This perk all the new players use and can pretty much kill you with. His pros are very good and his cons don't affect him too much. For that, he gets a C tier. Artillerist Artillerist is a perk which I see many people praising for being godlike. Are they right? Well, not really. Artillerist is ranged weapons only class. Even without his ability, he has pretty much no recoil at all. His ability is shooting a revolver, which one-shots almost all scaffs in the entire game. And if it headshots, he gains the effect Deadeye, making him have no recoil and fast reload speed. You might be thinking, this all sounds good, so what are his downsides? Artillerist, let's start with the pros first. Artillerist pros don't do much. His ability does everything his pros do. Only good thing is that he scavenges more ammo. And about his guns, that's the catch. 
25 reduced defense, 25% to be specific. That is so much. You might be thinking that it doesn't matter, as he is long range weapons user after all. But so many other classes can be long ranged as well. And without that gun, without the 25% reduced defense, 25% is making artillerist very fragile. I see newer players die with it all the time, but still say it, that it's good. I mean, it's not really that bad as I hear my friends say, but he gets bottom beat here. Prophet Prophet is a perk I see many people underestimate, thinking that it's only good in teams, but are they wrong? Prophet can hold good on his own, he can scavenge the entire map alone, find everything he needs and gain lots of scrap. Prophet's ability is a scanner, he can hold F to scan for all items within its range, and he can hold F and click mouse button 1 to scan the area for everyone on his teams and scan scavs within that area. Enemies he scanned lose 25% of their health. Prophet is also good with ranged weapons. Prophet's pros are very nice to have and make your life easier. His cons barely affect him at all. And for all of that, he gets a tier. Drifter Drifter is one of the biggest newbie traps there are. His ability is so bad and yet some people still praise him. He is the worst melee based class in the game, in the entire game. His ability is to either press F to cloak and turn invisible for scavs and be fast, or hold it to dash forward. While being cloaked, he has a special weapon which deals 90 damage by mouse pressing mouse button 1 and 150 damage by pressing mouse button 2. Doing mouse button 2 ends the cloak instantly and doing mouse button 1 takes 25% of the cloak's effect duration. He can also cloak his teammates. Upon doing 4 hits, usually but not always, killing 4 enemies, Drifter can be used to lure Queen away from the castle. Drifter's pros are what keeps him from being the worst class in the entire game. Immunity to exhaustion is, to me, one of the best traits there are. Immunity to exhaustion is one of the best pros there are, and his cons also don't affect him too much. And for all that, he gets D tier. Apostle Apostle's ability is sort of complicated. You've got your own permanent melee, which can heal you and make enemies weak. You can spawn your own minions, which follow you around and attack people you mark with your permanent melee. I do not have enough experience as Apostle to really say if he is good or not. Only from my view, I can say that he's both extremely strong and extremely weak. During waves with hordes of enemies, he doesn't really have many special things to help him. His minions don't have a lot of health, they lose fights against a bunch of melee scavs, and his permanent melee takes his health away whenever he pulls it out. I'm repeating myself that I do not have enough experience as him to really rate him correctly, but I do believe he is a solid B tier. Vagabond Vagabond is the GOAT of the game winter. I mean really. Everyone runs him. In every public match, I can guarantee you that there is one. And there is reason for it. Speed. Vagabond has a long katana called Kira. Upon pressing F, he slashes enemies with Kira, dealing damage based on his Kira's percentage. If he kills with Kira, 
he becomes faster and Eskira can't go below certain amount of percentage. This is a stackable buff with a cap of course. You can hold F to redeem the dog tags and heal yourself. Good vagabonds are golden and can carry your entire team if played correctly. His only downsides are that he loses way too many dog tags upon taking damage and that his pros barely matter at all while cons can be hefty at times. Vagabond's a good perk, but I don't think he deserves S. He is somewhere on top of A. Lazarus Lazarus, the game changer. Lazarus is a perk which everyone loves to have on their team, but not many people want to be it. Lazarus is extremely good support, but can't hold that well on his own. Lazarus' ability is an, an and I quote, energized nanite charged bolt. Upon impact, it will stun any scaffs and buff your teammates within its range. The Lazarus buff is the best buff in the entire game, increasing your damage, making you ignore debuffs, and making you almost invincible, only killable by heavy attacks or shotgun blasts, and all that for long duration. Only downsides Lazarus has is that he can't exactly do that much without his teammates. His cons are pretty hefty compared to his pros, and that is the only thing which prevents him from being S tier. He gets A tier. Berserker Berserker is arguably the strongest melee based perk in the entire game. He can take on hordes of enemies and get out alive. There's only few things which can kill him if he is played correctly. Berserker's ability is him injecting himself with the Calamity Serum, increasing his damage, swing speed, and making himself heal after every kill. He increases the ability's duration by killing scaffs and by parrying them. If you combine this with either an I for AS, aka the green steam, or the Lazarus buff, you become unkillable during waves. Berserker's pros are extremely good for his ability, and he and his cons don't affect him whatsoever. He is S tier. Emulator Emulator is a high risk, high reward perk. The buffs you can give to your teammates are great, but you yourself can die very, very easily. Emulator can press F to put himself and people around him on fire, which does no damage and apply a buff making you and your teammates increase melee damage and put enemies on fire upon hitting them either with melee weapon or a long ranged weapon. Emulator is a team player, but when solo you have to be extremely careful and that is because of the overheat mechanic. Whenever you press F you gain 50% overheat when you hold it or take it out, you also gain certain amount of overheat. Upon reaching 100% overheat, you die instantly. Emulator's pros are not that useful for his ability, and his cons are only a bit bad. Honestly, only thing keeping Emulator from being on top of A tier is the overheat mechanic. He gets top of B tier. Sovereign, the cultist. Sovereign's a powerful perk. He can make countless of minions fight for him. Sovereign is good both alone and in a team. Sovereign's ability consists of a dagger which damages enemies and marks them upon shoving them. And he can also throw the dagger by pressing F. If the dagger is thrown and lands on the ground, it will mark enemies around it. 
Marked enemies, when killed, turn into ghosts, which fight for you and spread even more marks. Sovereign can carry entire games when he is used right. His pros are somewhat useful to his ability, and his cons don't matter that much. He gets A tier. Mind Flare <clears throat> Mind Flare, just like the Sovereign, can make enemies his allies. He just does it different. Mind Flare can throw little spiders that will latch onto damaged enemies and convert them on your side. While that sounds good, you can only throw three spiders and you're not guaranteed to get a good one. If you're lucky, you'll convert a scarf with a powerful weapon, but if not, you'll convert useless melee scarf. That will die fast anyways. It's sort of RNG based during waves. I also find the spider convert system being inconsistent. Spiders not converting injured enemies at all. Mind player's pros are nice to have but don't affect him that much and his cons aren't that bad either. Mind player gets a B tier. Damned. Damned is only good for uh, professional players. In public lobbies, Damned can be the best perk to pick, and that is because he does not suffer from death morale. Damned is extremely weak with everything but bows. It's slow and can't use auxiliary equipment, but just the fact that he is immune to death morale is enough to put him up to top of C tier. Yes, I consider him better than the others.